Question 1. When you see this sign, you A. Are approaching a railroad crossing and should prepare to stop. B. Will always stop at the upcoming railroad crossing. C. Should stop and wait for a signal before crossing the railroad tracks. The correct answer. A. Are approaching a railroad crossing and should prepare to stop. Explanation. Railroad crossing ahead sign that warns drivers that they are nearing a railroad crossing. When drivers see this sign, they should take specific precautions to ensure their safety and the safety of others. Look and listen. Approach the railroad crossing with heightened attention and awareness. Look in both directions along the tracks to check for any oncoming trains. Listen carefully for any train horns or sounds that might indicate an approaching train. Slow down, reduce your speed as you approach the railroad crossing. Slowing down allows you to have better control of your vehicle and react quickly if needed. Prepare to stop, be ready to come to a complete stop if necessary. If you spot a train approaching or hear its horn, you must be prepared to stop your vehicle before the railroad tracks. Wait for trains to pass, if there is a train approaching the crossing, wait patiently until it has completely passed and the tracks are clear. Only proceed once you are certain that it is safe to do so. Railroad crossings can be hazardous, and taking these precautionary measures is essential to avoid accidents and ensure safe passage across the tracks. Question 2. In which of the following scenarios should your wheels not be pointed straight ahead? A. When waiting to make a left turn at a traffic light. B. When parked on a hill or sloping driveway. C. When parked on the side of a level roadway where there is no curb. The correct answer. B. When parked on a hill or sloping driveway. Explanation. When you're at an intersection and planning to turn left, make sure your car's wheels are facing straight ahead, not turn to the left. Keep them in this position until you have a clear and safe opportunity to begin your left turn. By doing so, if another vehicle hits you from behind while you're waiting, your car won't be forced into the oncoming traffic lane, potentially avoiding a more serious accident. If you park your vehicle on a slope, whether facing uphill or downhill, take a precautionary measure. Turn the wheels in a specific direction to help prevent the car from rolling into traffic if the brakes fail. The direction you should turn the wheels depends on the direction your car is facing. Facing uphill. Turn the wheels away from the curb and towards the road. This way, if the brakes fail, the car will roll into the side of the road, not into oncoming traffic. Facing downhill. Turn the wheels towards the curb. If the brakes fail, this will cause the car to roll into the curb, reducing the risk of it rolling into traffic. Question 3. When driving in fog, rain, or snow, use A. Low beams B. High beams C. Fog lights only The correct answer A. Low beams Explanation. Low beam headlights should be used in certain weather conditions such as fog, rain, and snow. When driving in these weather conditions, using high beams can create a problem known as glare. The light from the high beams reflects off the water droplets or snow particles in the air, creating a bright and blinding light that comes back towards the driver. This glare severely hampers the driver's visibility, making it challenging to see the road ahead clearly. To avoid this issue, it is recommended to use low beam headlights in fog, rain, and snow. Low beams emit light in a way that reduces glare and provides better visibility in such adverse weather conditions, allowing the driver to see the road more clearly and safely navigate through these challenging situations. Question 4. This white sign means A. You should slow down and move to the right lane. B. Stay in the right lane if you are driving more slowly than other traffic. C. Slower traffic must exit on the right. The correct answer. B. Stay in the right lane if you are driving more slowly than other traffic. Explanation. The meaning and importance of a slower traffic keep right sign on the road. Meaning of the sign, when you see a slower traffic keep right sign, it serves as an important instruction for drivers on the road. Rules to obey. The sign implies that there are specific rules that drivers should follow to maintain a smooth flow of traffic and enhance safety. Keep the left lane open for passing and faster traffic. The primary rule indicated by the sign is that drivers should use the right lanes if they are driving at a slower speed. The left lane should be kept clear for two main purposes. Passing. The left lane should be used for passing slower vehicles. If you are driving at a slower pace, you should move to the right lane to allow other vehicles to pass you safely. Faster traffic. 
The left lane is also designated for faster moving traffic. If you are driving at a slower speed and faster vehicles are approaching from behind, you should move to the right lane to let them pass without hindrance. By following these rules and keeping the left lane open for passing in faster traffic, drivers contribute to a more efficient and safe traffic flow on the road. This helps reduce congestion and minimizes the risk of accidents caused by speed differences between vehicles. Question 5. You want to make a right turn at an upcoming intersection. You should slow down and A. Move toward the left side of your lane. B. Avoid driving in the bicycle lane. C. Signal for 100 feet before turning. The correct answer. C. Signal for 100 feet before turning. Explanation. Signaling for a right turn, when you are planning to make a right turn while driving, you should start using your turn signal about 100 feet before the turn. By turning on your right turn signal 100 feet before the actual turn, you give other drivers and pedestrians ample notice of your intention to turn right. This allows them to adjust their driving or crossing accordingly, promoting safety and smoother traffic flow. Signaling in advance helps prevent sudden lane changes or unexpected turns, reducing the risk of accidents and contributing to a more predictable driving environment for everyone on the road. Question 6. If a truck or bus is making a right turn where you also need to make a right turn, you should A. Quickly turn before the truck or bus is able to B. Wait until the truck or bus turns before you turn. C. Squeeze between the truck or bus and the curb. The correct answer. B. Wait until the truck or bus turns before you turn. Explanation. Warning. Attempting to insert your vehicle between a turning truck or bus and a curb can lead to a severe crash. This maneuver is highly dangerous and should be avoided at all costs. Safety advice. To prevent a collision. You should never attempt to turn your vehicle until the truck or bus ahead of you has finished completing its turn. Wait patiently until the larger vehicle has safely completed its maneuver before proceeding with your turn. Turning between a turning truck or bus and the curb is risky because these larger vehicles have a wide turning radius. If you try to squeeze into the space between them and the curb, the truck or bus may not see you, leading to a collision. Waiting for them to complete their turn ensures a safer distance and reduces the risk of accidents. Always exercise caution and give larger vehicles enough space during turns to ensure road safety for everyone. Question 7. This sign means A. Pedestrians walking along the road ahead. B. Pedestrian crossing ahead. C. Pedestrians must not cross here. The correct answer. B. Pedestrian crossing ahead. Explanation. Explanation of warning signs and their significance regarding pedestrian crossings. Warning signs. Warning signs are typically colored yellow with black markings. They are placed on the road to alert drivers about specific hazards or situations they need to be cautious about. Pedestrian crossing alert. The particular warning sign being described in the text indicates the presence of a pedestrian crossing. It warns drivers that pedestrians may be crossing the road at this location. Obligation for drivers. If a pedestrian is crossing the road within a crosswalk that is marked with this sign, drivers have a legal obligation to stop their vehicles and remain stopped until the pedestrian has completely cleared the crosswalk. This sign is crucial for promoting pedestrian safety at designated crossing areas. It serves as a reminder to drivers to be vigilant, yield to pedestrians, and provide them with a safe space to cross the road. By stopping for pedestrians at such crossings, drivers help prevent accidents and create a more pedestrian-friendly environment on the roads. It is important for all drivers to adhere to this rule and exercise caution around pedestrian crossings marked with this warning sign. Question 8. You should increase the distance between your vehicle and the vehicle ahead when you A. Are following a small passenger vehicle B. Are being tailgated by another driver C. Are driving more slowly than the posted speed limit The correct answer B. Are being tailgated by another driver Explanation. Guidance on how to handle a situation when you are being tailgated by another vehicle. Create extra space in front, increase the distance between your vehicle and the one ahead of you. By doing this, you provide yourself with a safety cushion and more time to react to any sudden changes in traffic conditions. Avoid sudden braking, refrain from braking abruptly, as this can catch the tailgater off guard and may lead to a rear end collision. Slow down gradually, if you feel uncomfortable with the tailgater closely following you. Reduce your speed gradually and maintain a steady pace. 
This action signals to the tailgater that they need to increase their following distance to avoid any potential accidents. Merge into another lane, if it's possible and safe to do so, consider changing lanes to allow the tailgater to pass you. This move can remove the potentially hazardous situation altogether and ensure both vehicles can continue safely. Dealing with tailgaters requires caution and a focus on safety. Question 9. Which of these statements is true about drugs and driving? A. Any prescription drug is safe to use if you don't feel drowsy. B. Even over-the-counter drugs can impair your driving. C. Only illegal drugs can impair your driving. The correct answer. B. Even over-the-counter drugs can impair your driving. Explanation. Driving caused by any drug, regardless of its legality, is illegal and poses a significant risk to road safety. Impairment from legal drugs, both legal prescription medications and over-the-counter drugs have the potential to impair a person's ability to drive safely. This includes drugs commonly used for treating colds, hay fever, allergies, or medications meant to calm nerves or relax muscles. Illegal to drive while impaired. If a drug causes drowsiness, reduced reaction times, blurred vision, or any other impairment that affects safe driving, getting behind the wheel is prohibited. No differentiation between drug types. If any drug, regardless of its legal status, hinders a person's driving abilities, it is considered illegal to drive while under its influence. In summary, driving under the influence of drugs, whether legal or illegal, poses a danger to oneself and others on the road. It is crucial for drivers to be aware of the potential side effects of any medication they take and to avoid driving if those medications impair their ability to operate a vehicle safely. Question 10. When driving under snowy or icy conditions. A. It is safe to use your cruise control. B. Make speed and directional changes more gradually than you would otherwise. C. Drive as you would under normal conditions. The correct answer. B. Make speed and directional changes more gradually than you would otherwise. Explanation. Essential advice for driving in snowy or icy conditions. Gradual speed and directional changes. When driving on snowy or icy roads, it's crucial to make any adjustments to your speed or direction gradually. Abrupt changes can cause your vehicle to lose traction and result in skidding or spinning out of control. Avoid using cruise control. Do not engage the cruise control feature when driving on snow or ice. The reason behind this is that cruise control can't sense the slippery conditions, and if your tires lose contact with the road due to ice or snow, the system will continue to try maintaining the set speed. This can lead to dangerous situations where you may lose control of your vehicle. Driving on snow or ice requires extra caution and a more delicate approach to handling your vehicle. By making changes slowly and avoiding the use of cruise control, you improve your chances of maintaining control and staying safe on slippery roads. Question 11. Which of these statements is true about changing lanes? A. You only need to turn and look over your right shoulder for lane changes to the right or left. B. Look over your right shoulder for a right lane change and your left shoulder for a left lane change. C. Vehicles with two outside mirrors do not have blind spots. The correct answer. B. Look over your right shoulder for a right lane change and your left shoulder for a left lane change. Explanation. Step-by-step -step guide for changing lanes safely. Signal. Before you initiate a lane change, activate your turn signal to indicate your intention to other drivers on the road. Check mirrors. Look in all your rear view and side mirrors to assess the current traffic situation behind your vehicle. Look over shoulder. Perform an additional check by looking over your left or right shoulder. This action is crucial because it allows you to inspect your blind spot. A blind spot is an area on the road that is not visible in your mirrors, so looking over your shoulder helps you see any vehicles, motorcycles, or bicycles that may be in this blind spot, preventing potential collisions. By following these steps, you ensure that the lane you intend to move into is clear of any other vehicles or obstacles, making your lane change safe and reducing the risk of accidents. Question 12. When driving at night on a dimly lit street, you should. A. Drive slowly enough that you can stop within the area illuminated by your headlights. B. Turn on your high beam headlights to better see the vehicles ahead of you. C. Keep the instrument panel lights bright to be more visible to other drivers. The correct answer. A. Drive slowly enough that you can stop within the area illuminated by your headlights. Explanation. 
It is important to drive at a reduced speed during nighttime compared to driving during the day due to reduced visibility. It emphasizes the need to adjust driving habits to accommodate limited visibility and ensure a safe stopping distance. Slower driving at night. When driving at night, it is advisable to lower your speed compared to driving during the day. The main reason for this is that visibility is significantly reduced in the dark. You cannot see as far ahead as you would during daylight hours, which means you have less time to react to potential hazards or obstacles on the road. Limited visibility. During the night, the absence of natural light makes it harder to perceive objects, pedestrians, or other vehicles on the road. This reduced visibility increases the chances of unexpected hazards or sudden situations that require quick responses. Stopping distance. To ensure safety, it's essential to be able to stop your vehicle within the area illuminated by your headlights. Your headlights only reveal a certain distance ahead, and anything beyond that point remains obscured. By driving at a speed that allows you to stop within the illuminated area, you can better respond to any obstacles or dangers that come into view. In summary, driving more slowly at night is essential due to the limited visibility. By adjusting your speed to account for reduced vision, you can give yourself more time to react to potential hazards and ensure that you can stop your vehicle within the area illuminated by your headlights. Question 13. When being followed by a tailgater, which of the following will help you avoid being hit from behind? A. Merging into another lane. B. Decreasing your following distance. C. Changing lanes frequently. The correct answer. A. Merging into another lane. Explanation. How to handle a situation when you are being closely followed by a tailgater. Slow down gradually. If you find yourself being tailgated, it's essential to respond calmly and responsibly. To prevent a potential collision with the tailgater, reduce your speed gradually. By slowing down, you increase the distance between your vehicle and the tailgater, providing a safer buffer zone and more time to react to any sudden changes in traffic. Merge into another lane. If it is safe and possible to do so, consider changing lanes to allow the tailgater to pass you. Changing lanes can effectively remove you from the situation of being tailgated, and it allows the tailgater to proceed ahead safely. Dealing with tailgaters requires caution and composure. By slowing down gradually and potentially changing lanes, you can minimize the chances of a collision and ensure a safer driving environment for both you and the tailgater. Always prioritize safety and avoid any aggressive or sudden maneuvers in response to tailgating behavior. Question 14. Which of the following factors affect an individual's absorption of alcohol? A. Weight. B. Height. C. Intelligence. The correct answer. A. Weight. Explanation. Several factors influence how alcohol is absorbed by a person's body. These factors include weight. Heavier individuals tend to have a higher water content in their bodies, which can dilute alcohol and slow down its absorption. Biological sex. Men and women may process alcohol differently due to variations in body composition and metabolism. Amount of food. Consuming food before drinking can slow down alcohol absorption, as it provides a buffer in the digestive tract. Number of alcoholic beverages. The more alcohol a person consumes, the longer it takes for their body to process it. Alcohol elimination. The text states that the only way to remove alcohol from a person's system is to wait. The human body processes alcohol at a relatively constant rate, typically metabolizing one standard drink per hour. Other methods like drinking water, exercising, or taking certain substances do not speed up the elimination of alcohol and should not be relied upon to, upon to sober up more quickly. In summary, various factors affect how alcohol is absorbed by the body, and the only effective way to eliminate alcohol from the system is to wait for the body's natural metabolism to process it over time. Question 15. A broken yellow center line means that A. Passing is not permitted. B. Passing on the right is permitted when the way ahead is clear. C. Passing on the left is permitted when the way ahead is clear. The correct answer. C. Passing on the left is permitted when the way ahead is clear. Explanation. Meaning and rules associated with yellow center lines on the road. Broken yellow center line. When you see a broken yellow center line on the road, it indicates that drivers are allowed to cross the center line temporarily to pass another vehicle, but only if it's safe to do so. This means you can move into the oncoming traffic lane, the left side of the road, to pass the vehicle in front of you, but you must ensure there is no oncoming traffic at that moment. Solid yellow center line, on the other hand, 
When you encounter a solid yellow centerline, it is strictly prohibited to cross it for passing purposes. You must not move into the opposite lane, even if you want to overtake another vehicle. Crossing a solid yellow centerline is illegal and dangerous because it indicates that passing is not allowed due to possible traffic in the oncoming lane. To sum up, with a broken yellow centerline, passing is allowed when it's safe and there is no oncoming traffic. However, with a solid yellow centerline, passing is strictly forbidden, and you must stay in your lane. Question 16. If you approach a traffic light with a red signal and a police officer directs you to go through the intersection without stopping, you should. A. Stop until the light turns green. B. Go through the intersection without stopping. C. Come to a complete stop before proceeding. The correct answer. B. Go through the intersection without stopping. Explanation. When faced with police officers directing traffic, instructions from police officers override traffic signals and signs. When a police officer is present and giving specific instructions to control traffic, their directions take precedence over the normal operation of traffic signals and posted signs. In such situations, it is essential for drivers to obey the instructions given by the police officer for drivers to obey the instructions given by the police officer. Follow the officer's instructions. Regardless of what the traffic lights or signs indicate, it is crucial to follow the guidance of the police officer in charge. Their instructions are intended to ensure the safety and efficient flow of traffic, especially in unique or emergency situations. In summary, when faced with a police officer directing traffic, always follow their instructions, even if they seem to contradict the usual traffic signals or signs. Question 17. An orange and red triangular sign on a vehicle always means A. The vehicle has the right of way. B. Slow moving vehicle. C. Shoulder work ahead. The correct answer. B. Slow moving vehicle. Explanation. Identification of slow moving vehicles and the sign used to indicate them. Slow moving vehicles, vehicles that move at a lower speed than regular traffic are considered slow moving vehicles. Examples include farm tractors, road maintenance vehicles, and animal drawn carts. Orange and red triangle. To make other drivers aware of their slow speed and to enhance visibility, these slow moving vehicles display a specific sign on the back. This sign consists of an orange and red triangle. The purpose of this sign is to alert drivers approaching from behind that the vehicle ahead is slower moving and may require more time to accelerate or maneuver. By displaying this sign, Slow moving vehicles aim to reduce the chances of accidents and ensure that other drivers can take appropriate precautions when overtaking them on the road. Question 18. Fatigue increases the risk of A. Missing an exit. B. Being late for an appointment. C. Falling asleep behind the wheel and crashing. The correct answer. C. Falling asleep behind the wheel and crashing. Explanation. Dangers of driving while fatigued and the potential consequences. Errors in speed and distance. Fatigue can impair a driver's ability to accurately judge speed and distance on the road. This can lead to misjudgments and mistakes in maintaining a safe following distance from other vehicles or while changing lanes. Increased risk of crashes. Driving while fatigued significantly increases the risk of being involved in a traffic accident. Fatigued drivers may have slower reaction times, reduced focus, and impaired decision making skills making them more susceptible to collisions. Delayed decision-making. Fatigue can cause drivers to take more time to process information and make decisions on the road. This delay in decision-making can lead to dangerous situations, especially in critical moments that require quick responses. Falling asleep behind the wheel. One of the most dangerous consequences of driving while fatigued is the potential to fall asleep while driving. This situation is extremely hazardous as it can lead to losing control of the vehicle and crashing putting the driver's life and the lives of others on the road at serious risk. In summary, driving while fatigued is highly dangerous. It can impair a driver's judgment, increase the likelihood of accidents, lead to delayed decision-making, and even result in falling asleep at the wheel, leading to severe injuries or fatalities. Question 19. This sign means A. Cars on the right move first. B. You have the right of way. C. Let cross traffic pass before proceeding. The correct answer. C. Let cross traffic pass before proceeding. Explanation. Instructions for drivers when they encounter a specific sign that requires them to yield the right of way. 
yield the right of way. When you see this sign, it means you must yield the right of way to other vehicles and pedestrians. This means you need to give priority to those who are already in or about to enter the intersection or crossing. Slow down and let vehicles and pedestrians pass. As you approach the sign, reduce your speed and allow any vehicles or pedestrians who are crossing your path to proceed first. This ensures a safe and smooth flow of traffic. Stop if necessary. If there are vehicles or pedestrians actively crossing the intersection or crossing, you may need to come to a complete stop before proceeding. Only continue driving once it is safe to do so and after all others have cleared your path. The purpose of this sign is to enhance safety and avoid collisions at intersections or crossings where the right of way needs to be yielded to others. Being attentive and obeying this sign helps prevent accidents and ensures a safer driving experience for everyone on the road. Question 20. Which of the following blocks the smooth flow of traffic? A. Slowing down to look at collision scene. B. Avoiding unnecessary lane changes. C. Using public transportation instead of your vehicle. The correct answer. A. Slowing down to look at collision scene. Explanation. The concept of rubbernecking and its impact on traffic congestion. Rubbernecking. Rubbernecking refers to the behavior of drivers who slow down their vehicles to look at collisions or any unusual or extraordinary incidents on the road, often out of curiosity. Impact on traffic congestion. Rubbernecking contributes to traffic congestion, as it disrupts the normal flow of traffic. When drivers slow down to observe incidents, it creates a ripple effect, causing a slowdown in the entire traffic stream behind them. Avoidance. To prevent unnecessary traffic congestion, drivers should avoid rubbernecking. Instead of slowing down to stare at incidents, they should focus on maintaining a steady speed and keeping their attention on the road ahead. By refraining from rubbernecking, drivers can help reduce traffic congestion, ensure a smoother traffic flow, and promote safer driving conditions for themselves and other road users. It is essential to stay attentive and prioritize traffic safety over curiosity about unusual events on the road. Question 21. This sign means A. Yield the right of way. B. No passing zone. C. Reduction in lanes. The correct answer. A. Yield the right of way. Explanation. A yield sign is a specific type of road sign that conveys a clear instruction to drivers. Meaning. The yield sign indicates that drivers approaching the sign must yield or give way to other vehicles or pedestrians that have the right of way at the upcoming intersection or merge point. Right of way. Right of way refers to the legal right of a vehicle or pedestrian to proceed first in a particular traffic situation. When you encounter a yield sign, you do not have the right to proceed immediately, instead, you must wait for other traffic or pedestrians who have the right of way to pass before you can continue. Compliance When you see a yield sign, it is essential to slow down, be prepared to stop if necessary, and yield to other road users as required by the sign. This ensures safe and orderly movement of traffic and reduces the risk of accidents at intersections or merging points. In summary, a yield sign explicitly indicates that you must yield the right of way to others. It is crucial to follow this instruction to avoid potential collisions and ensure safe and efficient traffic flow. Always be attentive to road signs, including yield signs, and comply with their instructions to promote road safety for everyone. Question 22. When driving in work zones, you should a. Increase your speed to get through the zone as quickly as possible. B. Reduce your speed and be prepared to stop suddenly. C. Maintain your normal speed the whole way through the zone. The correct answer. B. Reduce your speed and be prepared to stop suddenly. Explanation. Instructions for drivers when they encounter a work zone on the road. Slow down and be prepared to stop. When approaching a work zone, reduce your speed and be ready to come to a complete stop if necessary. Work zones may have reduced speed limits and unpredictable conditions, so it's crucial to drive at a safe and cautious pace. Obey posted speed limits, pay attention to any posted speed limit signs within the work zone and adhere to them. The speed limits are often reduced in work zones to ensure the safety of workers and drivers. Be alert to conditions around you. Stay focused and alert while driving through the work zone. Be aware of changing road conditions, potential obstacles, and other vehicles around you. Watch for workers. In a work zone, there may be construction workers present. Be particularly watchful for workers on foot and follow any instructions given by flaggers or signs. 
The purpose of these instructions is to enhance safety within the work zone and prevent accidents involving both workers and drivers. By driving cautiously, obeying speed limits, and being attentive, drivers can help maintain a secure environment for all road users within the work zone. Question 23. When backing up. A. Look through the rear window. B. Press hard on the gas pedal. C. Rely only on your rear view mirror. The correct answer. A. Look through the rear window. Explanation. Guidelines for safe backing up of a vehicle. Arm placement. While backing up, place your right arm on the back of the passenger seat. This position allows you to maintain better control of the steering wheel and the vehicle's direction. Direct rear window view. Look directly through the rear window while backing up. Relying solely on the rear view or side mirrors may not give you a complete view of what is directly behind your vehicle. Limited mirror view. Keep in mind that mirrors do not show everything directly behind your vehicle. Blind spots exist, and using mirrors alone may lead to overlooking obstacles or pedestrians. Slow speed. Only drive in reverse at a low speed while backing up. This gives you more time to react to any potential hazards and minimizes the impact in case of an accident. By following these guidelines, drivers can enhance safety while backing up and reduce the risk of accidents or collisions. Being cautious and attentive during this maneuver is crucial to ensure the safety of yourself, pedestrians, and other vehicles around you. Question 24. You are approaching an intersection at the posted speed limit when the signal turns yellow. You should A. Slow down and proceed through the intersection without caution. B. Speed up to cross the intersection before the light turns red. C. Stop before entering the intersection, if you can do so safely. The correct answer C. Stop before entering the intersection, if you can do so safely. Explanation Meaning an action to be taken when encountering a solid yellow light while driving. Meaning of a solid yellow light a solid yellow light on a traffic signal indicates caution and serves as a warning that the light will soon change to red. Appropriate action when facing a solid yellow light. A. If you can safely stop before reaching the intersection. When you see a solid yellow light and have enough time and distance to stop your vehicle safely before reaching the intersection, you should do so. This means coming to a controlled and gradual stop without abruptly slamming on the brakes or causing any hazard to other vehicles or pedestrians. B. If you cannot safely stop before reaching the intersection. In some situations, you may find it unsafe to come to a sudden stop because of the speed or proximity to the intersection. In such cases, it is advised to proceed with caution through the intersection. This means you need to be vigilant, slow down, and be prepared to stop if the light turns red while you are still crossing the intersection. In summary, when encountering a solid yellow light, you should assess your ability to stop safely before the intersection. If you can stop safely, come to a controlled stop. If stopping suddenly would be dangerous, proceed cautiously through the intersection while being ready to stop if the light changes to red. The primary goal is to ensure safety for yourself, other drivers, and pedestrians on the road. Question 25. When you are behind a motorcycle, you should A. Be ready to use your horn. B. Drive more slowly. C. Allow a larger following distance. The correct answer. C. Allow a larger following distance. Explanation. How to safely follow a motorcyclist on the road. Recommended following distance. When driving behind a motorcyclist, it is advised to maintain a minimum following distance of 3 to 4 seconds. This means that you should keep a time gap equivalent to at least 3 to 4 seconds between your vehicle and the motorcycle in front of you. Motorcycles can stop quickly. Motorcycles have a shorter stopping distance compared to larger vehicles, such as cars or trucks. They can brake more rapidly due to their size and weight. Therefore, if you are following a motorcycle too closely, you may not have enough time to react and stop safely if the motorcyclist suddenly slows down or stops. Danger of following too closely Following a motorcycle too closely is dangerous not only for the motorcyclist but also for the driver of the larger vehicle. In case of an unexpected event, such as the motorcyclist falling or encountering an obstacle, maintaining a proper following distance provides the driver with enough time to react and avoid a collision. Extra distance in case of a fall. If a motorcyclist falls off their bike, having a larger following distance gives you the necessary space to maneuver and avoid hitting the fallen rider or the motorcycle itself. 
increased risk on specific road surfaces. The chances of a motorcycle losing traction and potentially falling are higher on certain road surfaces. These include wet and icy roads, gravel roads, and surfaces made of metal, such as bridges, gratings, and streetcar or railroad tracks. In such conditions, maintaining an adequate following distance becomes even more crucial. In summary, when driving behind a motorcyclist, it is essential to allow for a minimum 3 to 4 second following distance. This provides the necessary safety margin to account for the motorcycle's quick braking ability, avoid potential accidents, and respond to hazardous road conditions. Question 26. A person may legally ride in the back of a pickup truck when A. The sides of the pickup bed are at least 24 inches high. B. The back of the pickup is covered with a camper shell. C. In a secured seat and while using an approved safety belt. The correct answer. C. In a secured seat and while using an approved safety belt. Explanation. Safety guidelines regarding the transportation of people in the back of pickup trucks or other types of trucks. Prohibition of riding in the back of a truck. It is not permitted to allow a person to sit or ride in the open bed or cargo area of a pickup truck or any other type of truck. This restriction is in place because riding in the back of a truck without proper seating and safety measures can be hazardous and lead to accidents or injuries. Exceptions to the prohibition. A. Equipped with seats. If the truck has designated seats in the cargo area where passengers can sit securely, then it may be permissible for people to ride in the back of the truck. These seats should be designed and installed with safety in mind to minimize risks. B. Use of safety belt. If the truck has seats in the back and passengers decide to sit there, they must also use safety belts provided in those seats. In summary, it is advised against allowing people to ride in the back of pickup trucks or other trucks unless the vehicle has proper seats installed in the cargo area, and passengers use both the seats and safety belts. Question 27. You are approaching a green traffic light and traffic is blocking the intersection. What is the best thing to do? A. Partially enter the intersection to establish your right of way. B. Don't enter the intersection until you can get completely across. C. Continue into the intersection and wait for traffic to clear. The correct answer. B. Don't enter the intersection until you can get completely across. Explanation. When entering an intersection on a green light, ensure you can clear the entire intersection before the light turns red to avoid blocking it and facing potential consequences. Green light doesn't guarantee entry. When the traffic light turns green, it indicates that you have the right of way to proceed through the intersection. However, this does not automatically mean you should enter the intersection immediately. Clearing the intersection before the light changes. Before entering the intersection, you must ensure that you have enough space and time to completely pass through it before the traffic light turns red. This ensures that you can safely and smoothly cross the intersection without impeding the flow of traffic from other directions. Consequences of blocking the intersection. If you enter the intersection when you do not have enough space to clear it before the light turns red and end up getting stuck or blocking the flow of traffic, you can be cited for a traffic violation. Blocking the intersection creates traffic congestion, disrupts the smooth flow of vehicles, and increases the risk of accidents. In summary, the text advises drivers not to enter an intersection simply because their light is green. It is crucial to ensure there is enough space and time to completely pass through the intersection before the light changes to red. Blocking the intersection can result in a traffic citation, and it also leads to traffic issues and safety concerns. Being patient and following this rule helps rule helps maintain traffic order and safety on the roads. Question 28. When being passed by another vehicle. A. Brake hard. B. Maintain a constant speed. C. Speed up. The correct answer. B. Maintain a constant speed. Explanation. The topic provides clear instructions for drivers on how to respond when they are being passed by another vehicle on the road. It emphasizes the need to yield to the passing vehicle and avoid increasing speed, allowing the passing vehicle to merge back into their lane safely. Yielding to the passing vehicle, when another vehicle on the road is attempting to pass you, it has the right to use the adjacent lane to overtake your vehicle. As the driver being passed, it is your responsibility to yield to the passing vehicle. Avoid increasing your speed. In response to being passed, it is essential not to accelerate or speed up. Increasing your speed could impede the passing vehicle's ability to safely complete the passing maneuver. Allowing safe merging. To ensure safety for both vehicles, 
allow the passing vehicle enough space and time to complete the passing maneuver and merge back into your lane safely. Do not attempt to block or hinder the passing vehicle's return to your lane. In summary, when another vehicle is passing you, it is crucial to yield, refrain from increasing your speed, and provide ample space for the passing vehicle to safely merge back into your lane. Following these guidelines helps maintain a smooth flow of traffic and promotes road safety for all drivers involved. Question 29. There are two traffic lanes moving in your direction. You are driving in the left lane and many vehicles are passing you on the right. If the driver behind you wishes to drive faster, you should. A. Stay in your lane so you don't impede the flow of traffic. B. Drive on to the left shoulder to let the other vehicles pass. C. Move into the right lane when it is safe. The correct answer. C. Move into the right lane when it is safe. Explanation. Which lane to use in specific driving situations, depending on your speed and the actions you intend to take. Left lane usage. Driving quickly. If you need to drive at a higher speed, use the left lane. The left lane is often used for faster moving traffic on multi-lane roads or highways. Passing. When you need to overtake or pass another vehicle. Use the left lane. This lane provides more space and visibility to pass safely. Right lane usage. Driving more slowly than surrounding traffic. If you are driving at a slower speed than the other vehicles on the road, use the right lane. This lane is typically reserved for slower moving traffic or vehicles preparing to turn. Entering the road. When you are entering the roadway from a ramp or side street, use the right lane. It allows for a smoother transition into the flow of traffic. Turning right. If you need to make a right turn at an upcoming intersection, position your vehicle in the right lane well in advance of the turn. In summary, the left lane is for driving quickly, passing, and turning left, while the right lane is for driving more slowly, entering the road, and turning right. Always remember to use your turn signals and be aware of other drivers around you while changing lanes. Question 30. Yellow line separate. A. Traffic lanes on one-way streets. B. Traffic moving in opposite directions onto way roads. C. All carpool lanes from regular traffic lanes. The correct answer. B. Traffic moving in opposite directions onto way roads. Explanation. The yellow lines on the center of a road are used for two-way traffic and the rules associated with passing other vehicles. Yellow lines for two-way traffic. Yellow lines are used to mark the center of a road where traffic flows in both directions. Solid yellow center line. A solid yellow line running down the center of the road indicates that passing is not allowed. Drivers are not permitted to cross this line to pass other vehicles. They must stay in their lane and should not attempt to overtake other vehicles until they reach a section of the road where passing is allowed. Broken yellow center line. A broken yellow line running down the center of the road indicates that passing is allowed. Drivers are permitted to cross this line to pass other vehicles, but only when it is safe to do so and when passing will not interfere with oncoming traffic. They must exercise caution and ensure there is enough time and space to complete the passing maneuver without creating a hazard. In summary, yellow lines on the center of a road for two-way traffic convey important information about passing rules. A solid yellow center line means no passing is allowed, and drivers must stay in their lane. A broken yellow center line allows passing, but it should be done safely and without disrupting the flow of oncoming traffic. Question 31. From top to bottom. The following is the proper order for traffic lights. A. Red, yellow, green. B. Red, green, yellow. C. Green, red, yellow. The correct answer. A. Red, yellow, green. Explanation. What are the warning signs, their appearance, and the specific purpose of the traffic lights ahead warning sign? Warning sign appearance. Warning signs are typically designed with a yellow background and black markings. Purpose of warning signs. The main function of warning signs is to alert drivers to potential hazards or specific conditions that they will encounter immediately ahead on the road. These signs serve as advance warnings, giving drivers time to prepare and take appropriate actions to navigate through the upcoming situation safely. Traffic lights ahead warning sign. This sign is used to inform drivers that there are traffic signals, such as stop lights or traffic signs, at an intersection that they will be approaching soon. The sign prompts drivers to be ready to respond to the signals and to adjust their driving accordingly as they approach the intersection. In summary, the traffic lights ahead warning sign is a specific type of warning sign that informs drivers about the presence of traffic signals at an upcoming intersection, 
allowing them to be prepared and drive safely through the intersection. Question 32. The driver ahead of you stops at a crosswalk. What should you do? A. Cautiously pass the vehicle at 10 miles per hour or slower. B. Stop, proceeding only when all the pedestrians have crossed. C. Change lanes, look carefully, and pass the stopped vehicle. The correct answer. B. Stop, proceeding only when all the pedestrians have crossed. Explanation. How to pass a vehicle that is stopped at a crosswalk and the importance of considering pedestrians' safety in such situations. Passing a stopped vehicle at a crosswalk, when you encounter a vehicle that has come to a stop at a crosswalk, you must not attempt to pass it while it remains stationary. Reason for not passing, the primary reason for not passing the stopped vehicle is that there may be pedestrians crossing the street at the crosswalk. Pedestrians have the right of way at crosswalks, and they may be in the process of crossing the road even if you cannot see them at that moment. Visibility of pedestrians, pedestrians may be obscured from your view due to the stopped vehicle blocking your line of sight. Even if you cannot see any pedestrians immediately, they may be crossing or about to cross the street. Appropriate action, instead of passing the stopped vehicle, you must also come to a stop and wait. Proceed only after you are certain that all pedestrians have safely crossed the crosswalk and are no longer in your path of travel. In summary, when you encounter a vehicle stopped at a crosswalk, it is crucial not to pass it. There may be pedestrians crossing the street, and it is essential to prioritize their safety by stopping and waiting until they have completely crossed the crosswalk. Always be attentive and cautious around crosswalks to ensure the safety of pedestrians and comply with traffic laws that grant them the right of way at such locations. Question 33. This sign means A. Side road B. Merge C. Yield the right of way The correct answer a. Side Road Explanation. The side road junction sign is a road sign used to alert drivers about an upcoming intersection with a side road. This sign is essential for providing advance notice and warning to drivers that they will encounter a junction where a smaller or less significant road intersects with the main road they are currently driving on. Purpose. The main purpose of the side road junction sign is to inform drivers that they are approaching a point where another road intersects with the road they are currently traveling on. Design. The sign typically consists of a white triangle with a red border. Inside the triangle, there is an illustration depicting the main road running horizontally, and a smaller side road connecting vertically to the main road. This design helps drivers quickly recognize that there is a junction ahead. Advanced Warning The side road junction sign is placed well in advance of the actual intersection, providing drivers with sufficient time to adjust their speed, check for oncoming traffic, and be prepared to yield or stop if necessary. Caution. Drivers approaching the intersection should exercise caution and be attentive to any vehicles or pedestrians that may be entering or crossing the main road from the side road. In summary, the side road junction sign is used to warn drivers of an upcoming intersection with a side road. Its distinct design and placement help drivers become aware of the junction in advance, allowing them to take appropriate measures for a safe and smooth navigation through the intersection. Adhering to the warning provided by this sign promotes road safety and reduces the risk of accidents at junctions. Question 34. If you are about to be hit from the rear, you should not. A. Release your seatbelt. B. Brace yourself. C. Press your head against the head restraint. The correct answer. A. Release your seatbelt. Explanation. How to protect yourself in the event of a rear-end collision while driving. Rear-end collision effect. In a rear-end collision, when your vehicle is hit from behind while moving forward, your body may be forcefully thrown backward due to the impact. Brace yourself. To minimize the risk of injury, it's essential to brace yourself for the impact. Press your body against the back of the seat, providing some support and stability during the collision. Use the head restraint. The head restraint, also known as a headrest, on your seat is designed to prevent whiplash injuries. Adjust the head restraint to a suitable height and place your head against it. This will help support your head and neck during the collision, reducing the risk of whiplash. Firm grip on the steering wheel. Maintain a strong grip on the steering wheel with both hands. This allows you to have better control over your vehicle's direction during and after the collision. Be ready to apply brakes. If your vehicle is hit from behind, there is a risk of being pushed into another vehicle or obstacle ahead. Be prepared to apply your brakes immediately after the impact to prevent further collisions. In summary, in the unfortunate event of a rear-end collision, 
Follow these safety measures. Brace yourself against the back of your seat. Use the head restraint to prevent whiplash. Maintain a firm grip on the steering wheel and be ready to apply your brakes to avoid secondary collisions. These steps can help reduce the risk of injuries and improve your chances of safely managing the, managing the situation. Always prioritize safety while driving and follow proper procedures in the event of an accident. Question 35. If you park facing uphill on a street with a curb, set the parking brake and A. Turn the front wheels toward the curb. B. Turn the front wheels away from the curb. C. Leave the front wheels straight. The correct answer. B. Turn the front wheels away from the curb. Explanation. How to position your vehicle's wheels when parking on roads with different slopes and curb conditions. Parking uphill with a curb. When parking uphill on a road that has a curb, sidewalk or raised edge, turn your vehicle's front wheels away from the curb. This means you should turn the steering wheel towards the road, away from the curb. The purpose of this is to allow the front wheels to roll away from the curb if the vehicle starts to roll backward. This way, the curb acts as a barrier to prevent the car from rolling further downhill. Parking uphill without a curb or parking downhill. When parking uphill on a road without a curb or when parking downhill, turn your vehicle's front wheels toward the curb or the edge of the road. This means you should turn the steering wheel towards the curb or road's edge. This allows the front wheels to roll towards the curb or edge if the vehicle starts to roll forward. The curb or road edge acts as a barrier to prevent the car from rolling further down the slope. In summary, when parking uphill with a curb, turn your wheels away from the curb. When parking uphill without a curb or parking downhill, turn your wheels towards the curb or edge of the road. These parking practices help enhance safety by reducing the risk of the vehicle rolling uncontrollably in the event of a parking brake failure or other unforeseen circumstances. Remember to set your parking brake properly regardless of the parking situation to add an extra layer of safety when parking on slopes. Question 36. Drivers must use their seatbelt. A. Unless they are driving a vehicle built before 1978. B. Unless they are driving a limousine. C. And failure to do so will result in a traffic ticket. The correct answer. C. And failure to do so will result in a traffic ticket. Explanation. Seat belt usage. Drivers are required to wear seat belts at all times while operating a vehicle. Legal requirement. Wearing seat belts is not optional. It is a mandatory rule imposed by law to enhance safety while driving. Consequences of non-compliance. If a driver fails to wear a seat belt, they may be cited, which means they can receive a traffic citation or ticket as a penalty for the violation. In summary, drivers must always wear seat belts while driving and failure to do so can result in receiving a citation. The purpose of this rule is to prioritize safety and reduce the risk of injury or death in the event of an accident or a sudden stop. Seatbelts are crucial safety devices that can save lives, and it is essential to comply with the law and buckle up whenever you're behind the wheel.